We're actually blessed to have the producer of that film uh, present with us. He's a part of the panel, uh, Dr. Richard uh, Revolt. Uh, he's a psychoanalyst and will eloquently uh, provide us with a tenured focus on arts, on how the arts um, can yield the process and outcome of healing and better understanding, uh, as well as action among human beings. So, Richard Revolt. Before I begin, I'd like to thank Kurt Frank and Alicia Champion. Uh, Alicia did the wonderful uh, editing on this film. Kurt uh, really made it happy. Right? So, yes. The title of my paper is Artist Medicine, Drawing Trauma Outside. We must, must never forget, art is not a form of propaganda, it is a form of truth. John F. Kennedy. Kennedy's quote is true enough, to the point, but one attributor of Paul Gauguin describes a quite different emerging truth. Art is either plagiarism or revolution, the retiree used the word. This is an important description for an artist such as Tyree, who works subversively with the medium of graffiti art in the service of social justice. Characteristics of Tyree's medicinal art that support this definition include, one, using indigenous artifacts, cast off objects, and various detritus. Art of Heidelberg reflects mirrors and gives back to the community earlier representations of their world. Art's visual images bypass the fences and are both psychologically restricted in nature, such as denial and projection, and instead stimulates implicit rather than explicit memory. A brief distinguishing definition here might be helpful. Implicit memory entails emotional activation, not requiring conscious recall, and where there is no verbal language, only sights, sounds, or smells. While explicit, coming online later, is recalled memory, where language is present and problems are identified, worked with to form meaning and interpretation and as such are higher forms of remembering. Two, implicit memory is a memory of trauma, demonstrating brain, brain plasticity, where brain connections and the structure of neural pathways are changed and diminished. The art objects Tyree uses, toys and simple household items, counter these occlusions because they carry memories from an earlier, different time period. Their current use in novel and startling ways redefine how art is viewed through the eyes of adult children. This is a process of continually remaking and remembering the past in the present rather than as a stilted form of discovering objective historical facts. For example, shoes of various kinds are strategically draped on overhead wires. These, these are shoes, but they are something else registering just below the level of consciousness. Shoes have souls, as everyone knows. But they also signify Souls, S O U L S, upon looking up and considering the history of lynching. The observant viewer might make the additional implicit association to Billie Holiday's Strange Fruit, first penned by A. Miracle in 1937. Southern trees bear a strange fruit. Blood on the leaves, blood at the root. 
black body swinging in the southern breeze, strange fruit hanging from the poplar trees. In Tyree's art, everything is something else, and we often unconsciously respond to this invitation to surrender what we think we know about art's meaning and purpose. Number three. More specifically, HP creates cognitive dissonance that demands and finds resolution when cast off junk becomes whimsical treasures and abandoned houses serve as outdoor art galleries and living museums. Our perceptions are turned inside out. Walter Benjamin reminds us memory is not just information that individuals recall or stories being retold in the present. Rather, memory is the self-reflexive act of contextualizing and continuously digging into the past through place. Number four, the realization of artifacts disturbs the viewer by creating a crisis of meaning. This is not the art we have come to know as adults. Instead, it harkens back to memories of childhood and objects, materials used, and colors of life. An internal image, an internal challenge is issued to make sense, assign meaning, and describe relevance to reduce discomfort by making implicit explicit and worthy of exploration. HP demands we recall that we invent as much as we remember our history. From a slightly different perspective, the art historian Ernest Gombrich makes mention that art is not art without the viewer's collaboration. Number five, final records, stuffed animals, and clocks are all common household objects. But when fixed to urban dwellings in disrepair, they highlight the urban dilemma. These materials inject a titrated dose of the infected agent causing harm. That is, we see and feel the despair in haunted homes and on the streets in economic wastelands that still maintain otherness. Guidance art is meant to provoke, incite, and enlighten. Actually experiencing these physical objects shakes off our complacency, invites greater awareness, enhances consensus for problem solving, and promotes emotional resiliency. Sadly, not all are able to metabolize these injections of disquiet. For some, it is too disturbing and enraging. Michael Eigen tells us, this kind of rage substitutes for growth, fills holes in the self, masks deficiencies. It is allied with a sense of helplessness, disability, frailty. It attempts to hammer others into helplessness. In futile attempts to blunt their pain, this radioactive rage seeks to destroy the offending objects. The fires that have plagued HP may be understood as plaintive acts of violence against an art that subverts the status quo, cannot be silenced, and will not play nice. Some illnesses of the soul cannot be treated by even the most powerful of the medicines. Number six, the damage and scope of destruction on display in Guyton's work exposes the cultural intergenerational results of urban trauma. Poverty so immense in size reveals historical, social, and economic forces operating over decades that have laid waste to large swaths of a once vibrant American city. Through the human faces of familial and communal displacement, trauma is revealed to be at its core a shutting down to life, a closing off, a retreat to helplessness. 
Medicine is art, works to provide opportunities for health, both physically and emotionally, by providing recognition and validation to the deadening effects of odious yet licensed racism, while offering hope and stimulating witnesses who can no longer deny the problems. And seven, art demands self-reflection, imagination, and reassessment of the individual's place in his or her community. As a gathering place, HP fosters intellectual and social engagement for people who might otherwise suffer lived in mistrust as they reside in communities <coughs> hostile and antagonistic to each other. Gathering places are fluid mosaics, offering moments of matter, metaphor, scene, and experience that create and mediate social spaces and temporalities. Such places are sites where people can join in conversation, make contact with loss, and confront injustice. Through guidance art, respect for differences deepen, allowing fixed roles to soften and change, and forming a new coming together <coughs> based on spontaneous desire not forced legalistic dictates. This is what I believe Tyree Gatton means when he calls for flipping the script. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. And I just want to let everyone know that uh, there is a lot of substance to this. and encourage you to take your notes uh, as we'll have the full panel come and join us for questions and, and discussion. Um, our next presenter is Holly Fien Calligan. She is an art therapy professor at Wayne State University. Uh, and she's going to give you guys a glimpse into a leading practice where we're seeing uh, therapy meet higher education and how they use the Heidelberg Project as their open classroom um, for this work. Thank you. Can, ever, <laughs> can everyone hear me and see me? <laughs> oh, look how far down she had to put it. <laughs> Thank you. Well, as an art therapist and professor at Wayne State University, I need no convincing that art has healing properties and can be a form of medicine. Um, but I've had the opportunity to experience the art medicine of the Heidelberg Project specifically while teaching service learning classes and research classes at, the Heidel at, at Wayne State in partnership with the Heidelberg Project uh, and through volunteering, which Wayne State also values. Um, this year, Wayne State is celebrating its 150th anniversary and um, last night we were welcomed by Victor Green from Wayne State, and it is his office, Government and Community Affairs, that's attempting to uh, log 150,000 volunteer hours <coughs> among students and staff and um, uh, faculty. And so a lot of those volunteer hours are being accrued at the Heidelberg Project as well. But um, right now I'd like to talk about some examples of art therapy that I see practiced at the Heidelberg Project and share some specific examples involving students as service learners, um, as research volunteers, and show how together our partnership really represents a 360 because there's a lot of um, give and receive, teach and learn that I think um, benefits us all. By definition, Art therapy is an integrative mental health and human services profession that enriches the lives of individuals, families, and communities. So I'm a couple before that, but I'll get to that one. Thank you. Um, so art therapy enriches the lives of individuals, families, and communities through active art making, the creative process, implied psychological theory, and therapeutic relationships. 
Thank you. Okay. Now, service learning is a partnership between the university and um, a community agency like the Heidelberg Project, where service to the community is performed by students as a course assignment to meet a course learning objective. In service learning, a community partner describes a goal or a problem they want to solve or something they want to help with. And students figure out what from their skill set they can <coughs> contribute so that together everyone works on the goal. Often the course objective is something like social responsibility learning or interpersonal learning or intrapersonal learning about oneself as students enter situations new to them. And they might encounter crises of meaning, as Richard um, indicated. How does one handle these situations? Do these situations provoke uh, biases or preconceived notions or prejudgments that can be examined? So students begin talking about what they will do in class. This is an example of um, Professor Wayne Jackson, who's here. And these students created a community on paper um, where they reflected on who am I as a member of a community, what can I bring to a community, and how does my community make me part of who I am? Again, that 360 sort of process. Learning about homelessness was part of the service learning experience of several students whose assignment one year coincided with Tyree Guyton's um, installation of street folk that we heard about this morning on Edmond near Woodward. As service learners listened to Tyree's vision for the installation and his ideas about how they could assist, the students also reflected on what they could contribute um, in addition. And both Tyree and Janine helped guide the students to identify their contributions they could make and listened carefully to what would help the students make the project meaningful to them. Throughout the semester, students helped to paint the 16,000 shoes, uh, the number thought to represent the number of people who were homeless in Detroit at that time, and helped to arrange the shoes on the street. This is a photo by Michelle Fogursky, one of our alumni, and incidentally, the first um, paid Heidelberg staff, if I remember correctly. Um, so um, with every shoe, students could imagine to whom it belonged. Where was the owner now? In a shelter, with friends, on a street corner, hungry, in pain? Students were confronted with their own preconceived and often misinformed ideas about homelessness. So not only were students getting an education about homelessness and about themselves, um, but also about their identities as artists. As one student said, I'm thinking of myself as functioning as a part of a greater whole, as opposed to being a lone artist. And that feels surprisingly refreshing and good. Another service learner at this time was Hiroko. And by the way, if I mention someone's name, I have permission to do so. Hiroko is a Japanese-American artist who, upon first arriving at the Heidelberg Project, said <coughs> she didn't like it. But then she said she had to question why she didn't like it. And she was upset with her reaction. She said she had to do some soul searching. Well, part of her soul searching was translating a Heidelberg Project brochure from English to Japanese to introduce the Japanese community to the Heidelberg Project because she believed that some Japanese people were uh, afraid to come to Detroit. They lived in the suburbs and they were afraid. She also interviewed Tyree and published the interview in a Japanese newsletter. During her interview, Tyree Guyton said, I don't know if you remember this or not, don't be afraid, be empowered. In a way, she said that changed her life. She says, I'm a shy person. And Tari said, why don't you just call the mayor? Tell him the feelings of the Japanese community. And, Ta and uh, Hiroko said, I am nobody. I can't call the mayor. And Tyree said, why not? He convinced her to call the mayor. <laughs> she didn't reach the mayor. She reached uh, a PR person, but she talked to that person. Well, 
Just prior to the installation of Street Folk, Japan endured a major earthquake and tsunami. And although I don't think there had been a plan to have a television in the, in the installation, um, Tyree had one at hand, and he, and he installed that as well. Um, he asked Hiroko to paint a polka dot on it, a red dot, to signify the Japanese flag and to represent that the people of Detroit were paying attention to what was happening in Japan. Several months ago, when I shared my memory of this situation with Hiroko to see if I got it right, and in an email she replied, I enjoyed reading what you wrote. It was like finding a precious souvenir that I misplaced and forgot about. Thank you so much for reminding me of my Heidelberg experience. Although the mayor's office has never returned my phone call, <laughs> the fact that I did call and talk to the mayor's assistant gave me a lot of confidence. I was very proud of myself getting out of my comfort zone that day. Another service learner, Lisa, was a metalsmith and sculptor, and her assignment, she, she had to take an incomplete because she spent several years at the Heidelberg Project. Um, at the time that Lisa had her class, what was needed at the Heidelberg Project was a new welcome sign. And as a, as a sculptor, she offered her sculpture skills to um, create a new sign. Um, so she looked within for inspiration, she said. And while scanning the corner on which the welcome uh, sign would be constructed, she saw liquor bottles. She wrote in her class box, block, oh, the liquor bottle, the Native American family icon. We are expected to become alcoholics and this ritual is handed down through generations. To begin her structure, the liquor bottles were collected and cleaned <coughs> and low fired in a kiln, physically transforming them into a new aesthetic, flattening them so they could be placed within glass panels as part of the welcome sign. Next, she learned bricklaying, enlisting the help of neighbors, sometimes paying them with quarters she had rolled. She wrote about her vulnerability regarding bricklaying, but she gained strength in the process and trust was gained with each brick and with each community member who helped her. The sculpture was slated for a three week construction, but that took eight weeks, but she didn't stop there. This is another year. <laughs> Lisa's second installation was what she calls the Mayan sun clock, which celebrates the viewer and makes them take notice of their changing shadows. Maybe you've just toured the Heidelberg Project and, and have seen this. Um, the sun clock is calibrated each full month. The numbers move from four to 17 degrees. The Mayan sun clock features 90-year-old brick pavers and recycled cinder blocks reclaimed within the Heidelberg community. The circular shape pays homage to Henry <coughs> Dotton's polka dot. She wrote, we leave generations of drinking and now foster generations of time. In a subsequent year, she helped construct that meditation garden there on your right, which involved removal of 20 years of debris and a dead tree. So you see this process of just reclaiming. Um, she also sponsored winter and summer solstice celebrations because it's important to celebrate and note the changing of the seasons. Many Saturdays she had um, a drop in art class as well. Um, the other instructors and I thought that Lisa showed remarkable self-determination, this intrinsic motivation that was fueled by her successes and what was hard but what she managed to work through and the support and the really the cultivation of her ability to do this at the Heidelberg Project. Other students have been significantly impacted by the Heidelberg Project like Janine and the other, my other Janine, Janine Conley Berry, whose service involved researching grants appropriate to support the Heidelberg programs, um, the Young Associates of Heidelberg, and the ACE II program, Art, Community, Education, and Environment. Janine became uh, fully interested in the Heidelberg Project's goals in art, education, and community. She was invited to become a volunteer intern for the Dancing on the Streets program, festival, and afterwards she completed the docent training, and she wrote, 
that the Heidelberg Project made a major impact on me as a citizen and as a student. It represented the very fabric of how arts continue to inspire and promote culture and community. This art landscape in the city of Detroit influenced me to become a creative entity in my own environment. Part of serving the community is having the notion that you can benefit others in more compelling ways. Being open-minded and finding solutions, I found that being part of someone's life builds character and enriches the human spirit. Almost done here. This is another quote by a student who found that the real essence of serving is almost like putting a mirror to your face, <coughs> realizing that what you give out comes back to you. So when you're serving others, you're serving yourself. Anytime I helped someone, I helped myself. What a wonderful vehicle for art or the Heidelberg Project to be that message that I care about what you're saying. I know this might not be your best day, you might be hungover, but what I care about happens to you this day. And it's one of those moments where art pushes you to do things. It pushes you to walk up to someone you might not walk up to, or walk up to someone that's screaming. Not only service learning partnerships, but through research, the Heidelberg Project has partnered with art therapy students and has offered opportunities for volunteerism and research. Like this is an example of some drawings that some um, school uh, students made after visiting the Heidelberg Project as part of the, uh, the ACE2 program, Our Community Environment and Education. Um, and this was a program that taught students about recycling um, a community among other things. Um, our, our research students helped um, to um, contribute to a formative evaluation of what was working with that program. Um, they learned a lot from that. Currently, you might notice some note takers here. These are Wayne State research students now charged with capturing the main points of these sessions. I, I bet their notes are huge because <laughs> there's so many wonderful main points. And these data will be considered further as a part of a summary report on the 30 years, 30 plus years of the Heidelberg Project. So again, the Heidelberg Project is uh, providing an opportunity for student learning. <coughs> Volunteerism. Through volunteering, students, alumni, and others can do something as simple as weeding and lot cleanup. In order to install artworks, lots have to be prepared. Such outdoor projects bring together groups of people who might not ordinarily be together. And they promote qualities like communication, socialization, collaboration, and caring for the earth. To quote another Detroiter that was referenced in the video, Grace Lee Boggs, community art making and gardening activities are not superficial, they're not inconsequential. They foster an enduring spirit of humanism and the human values of hope, cooperation, stewardship, and respect. So in closing, I find that the experiences of the Wayne State students at the Heidelberg Project fit the definition of art therapy. Lives have been enriched through the therapeutic process of art making and relationships. Tyree said, first you have to heal the mind, to heal the land, something like that. But I think that no one can become their best selves without a loving community that supports that. And the students have found that at the Heidelberg Project. When people make art together, they create community and discover new ways to go forward. Thank you. Thank you, Holly. All right, so coming full circle, pun intended, um, <laughs> we have our lovely trio of directors for the uh, educational arm of the Heidelberg Project, Heidelberg Arts Leadership Academy, and they are basically going to disassemble for you um, their methods uh, and the curriculum that they deliver to youth and how it meets them where they are, but also provides them with college and career readiness um, to prepare them for the real world. So, that do, Sharman Archer, Anya Dennis, and Kisa Davis.
welcome, welcome. We are so happy that you all are here with us today to share in on this wonderful occasion. Two things that have echoed in my mind through this conference from yesterday and today has been a message related to the Heidelberg Project and it's called the Heidelberg Magic. Another thing that's echoed in my mind in reference to the Heidelberg Project is art as a medicine and how art is used as a medicine within our communities. So the first thing I'm gonna to talk to you guys about, a little bit about is the magic of the Heidelberg Project. Because the magic of the Heidelberg Project is what brought us, me, Charmin, and Kisa here to Detroit City to create what is called the Heidelberg Arts Leadership Academy. So, I'm gonna take you guys on a little journey. You ready to go with me? Yes. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So, Charmin Archer, who's the director of our curriculum and content, for the Heidelberg's Arts Leadership Academy, purchased a house out in, um, purchased a house in Ann Arbor. It's Lenny, I'm sorry. And Kisa and I um, decided we would come visit her. Now Kisa, Charmin, and I have been friends for over 20 years. So we decided we would come visit Charmin and see her new home and, and just have some quality girl time because the older we get, the less time we get to kind of spend time together bonding <coughs> as women and as men, is that correct? Yes. So, we get here, we have a wonderful, wonderful um, vacation, got a chance to kind of explore Detroit and everything that was bubbling on in the city. And the day before Kisa was due to go back to California, we sat in Sherman's house and we could be nerds at times, right? So Sherman asked us a question, she said, what would you do if you can do anything in the world, right? And so when she asked us that question, I said I would use art to educate youth, okay? Kista said I would use art to empower communities. And then Sharma said, and I would create a curriculum that encompasses all of this and more, right? So that night we whipped out our pens and we brought up a whole proposal about an educational curriculum that did not exist, okay? And we stayed up for hours and we we're talking about all the initiatives that we we're gonna start and the goals and the school partnerships that we would have and what our curriculum would look like and how it would be centered around youth and social justice and social activism and all these wonderful things. And the very next day, we go to the Heidelberg Project. <coughs> As we're walking down the street at the Heidelberg Project, we run into the artist. Mr. Tyree Guyton. And Mr. Tyree Guyton said to us, who are you all and what do you do? So we began to tell him about our vast educational experience, of 20 years in education in country and out of the country, 14 years of experience in the nonprofit world, globally um, and domestically. And he said, well, what do you want to do with all that? And we said, well, we we're thinking about creating an arts-based program, you know, as a nonprofit that, you know, kind of caters to, you know, youth and, and urban environments and gives them, you know, agency and leadership skills and all of these things. And Mr. Tyree Guyton said, I would implore you to do that with an already established nonprofit such as the Heidelberg Project. So we looked at each other. He said, I want to introduce you to my wife. Janine Woodfield, okay? That very second, I said, okay. Kisa was gonna go back to the airport. I was gonna drop her off. I said, Kisa, I'm gonna drop you off at the airport, and then I'll come back to meet with Ms. Janine Woodfield. Now, see, I have 20 years of experience in education, okay? Teaching African-centered pedagogy, teaching um, teacher training in terms of um, international education, domestic education, holistic education, but I have absolutely no experience in a nonprofit realm, okay? So I turned to Kisa as we were driving in the car and I said, Kisa, I need you here for this meeting. Now I was on my way to take her to the airport. This is the Heidelberg magic. This is how it captivates you. This is how it grabs you. This is how it moves you. And Kisa said to me, absolutely. She missed her flight. We went to meet with Janine Woodfield. And from that point on, we were in discussion about how we were going to create what is now called the Heidelberg Arts Leadership Academy. I no longer took the job offer that was sitting at my feet to be a professor at a university in Dubai. I left that job offer and decided to come here to Detroit to partner, partner along with this wonderful, dynamic nonprofit that Mr. Tyree Guyton has created. So at this moment, can we give Mr. Tyree Guyton and Janine a <laughs> Now, 
Now, who are we and what is our mission, okay? The Heidelberg Arts Leadership Academy is an in-school and after-school program. We service students ages in the, in the range of um, fourth grade through 12th grade. And we give students a platform to express themselves. We give students a platform to have agency. And we give students a platform to create in terms of art. Our main goal is to help students to be leaders within their community, to help students to make social change within their community, and to help students to learn who they are and how they fit into this paradigm of the world, okay? Our mission and our goal is to really create an arts environment whereby students can see themselves reflected in the classroom, students can see themselves reflected in their neighborhood, and students can see themselves beyond the walls in which they live in Detroit City. So currently, we just started our program in January. So we're not currently a year old. This January will be our one year old birthday, so we're really excited about that. But um, we've garnered support from DPS, we've garnered support from charter schools um, in uh, Detroit City. In our first year, we partnered with four schools in Detroit City. We partnered with um, Martin Luther King High School, we partnered with Southeastern High School, we partnered with Marcus Garvey Junior High School, and we've partnered with Senior Cesar Chavez Elementary School. We have now expanded, not, not, we're not in our second year yet, but we've now expanded to seven school partnerships throughout Detroit City. We're also working with incarcerated youth as well. So that's one of the initiatives and partnerships that we are so, so, so extremely <coughs> excited um, to speak about and to engage with students who sometimes are discarded to engage with students who sometimes are looked upon as Tyree's artwork is, as trash, okay? And to engage with students who are sometimes lost, and it is our job to help find them and help them to find themselves. One another initiative that I'm extremely proud to talk about is that this summer, through the Heidelberg Arts Leadership Academy, we will be taking students to Ghana, West Africa. And that's something that we are extremely excited um, to talk about and to share with our, um, our schools, our principals, our communities, that students from Southeastern High School who oftentimes have never even been downtown Detroit, more or less getting on a plane and going thousands of miles across the waters to visit another country, another continent, will be with us, with us through the Heidelberg Arts Leadership Academy so that they can get that exposure and so that they can gain the knowledge that they need to have in order to see themselves as global individuals and global, global children in society who can contribute to their, their communities in a productive and positive way. So we are the Heidelberg Arts Leadership Academy and Ms. Archer is gonna come up here and talk to you guys a little bit more about our phenomenal curriculum. Thank you all very much. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Sharmin Archer. I am the Director of Curriculum and Content for the Heidelberg Arts Leadership Academy, also known as HALA. So I'm going to thank you for that overview of what we do, how we came to be, and our mission. We have a really short video, it's about one minute, that um, lets you guys see some of the students that we work with and hear their perspective and their experience with HALA. I love being here in Detroit City. I love our school partnerships. I absolutely adore our students. We work with them, we learn from them, we laugh with them. Art is whatever you make it, and whatever someone else pulls from that is their perception to see the evolution of their growth intellectually and also in terms of the art is really inspiring to us. They've taught in Ghana, they've taught in Dubai, they have taught all over the world. These are master educators. Art is very important because it's like our lifeblood, what makes us who we are. I never thought I would do anything like this. And I'm just expressing myself more because I feel like now is the time. We all feel like this is our calling and our background together created a foundation for this program. My passion is always to work with these students and give passion and let them know their environment cannot and it will not dictate their future. So my role is to be pretty brief, and I'm here to give you an overview of the courses that we have taught in elementary, middle, and high schools so far in Detroit since January 2018. 
So we offer a course, uh, uh, excuse me, a menu of three courses, and our first course is called Hip Hop Album Covers. So in this course, our house students have an opportunity to analyze and evaluate the artwork that they see on hip hop album covers. So in general, our students are familiar with hip hop music, right? They know the artist, they know the genre, they know the fashion, um, and in a lot of ways, hip hop music is kind of like the soundtrack to their lives. So what we do is we take that interest and we take it a step further so that students can look at the pictorial narratives that they see on these album covers. So we use the language of, do you see an economic narrative? Do you see a political narrative? Is it a cultural narrative? Is it a social narrative? Is it a personal narrative? And we really give them that language and a deeper understanding of how to look at hip hop album covers just beyond the music and the genre. Um, in the hip hop, excuse me, in the history of hip hop album cover course, we also teach them about the history of hip hop music and how it's been used as a tool to transform communities and individuals. They take that information and they're able to use that same lens to look at the art on hip hop album covers and the way that art on those album covers can transform a community. And then they broaden that to just look at how art in general can be healing and transformative for individuals and societies. So that's our first course. Our second course is called Rites of Passage. And if, instead of it being spelled with an R for the rites, we spell it with a W. So it is a writing course where students are on this journey of self-exploration <coughs> through writing. So not only do they learn about the mechanics of writing in terms of sentences and um, poetry, essays, paragraphs, they also learn about how writing can be used as a tool of empowerment, expression, and a tool for social change. So in this course, they decide and they learn about what is a social issue and what is social justice. And they decide on social issues that are important to them. And our students this last year, the issues that were important to them, they said abandoned houses, um, arson, and kidnapping. And so they take the skill set of writing, the knowledge of those issues and their personal experience, and they put it together and create a zine. For those of you who aren't familiar, a zine is just a mini magazine um, that's self-produced and self-made. So I think their final zine was about 24 pages, and it included their writing about these social issues, it had original poetry, artwork, and midway through the course, we take them on a photography field trip. We give them disposable cameras. They are not familiar with them at all. Um, we give them a little bit of the basics of photography, and they walk around their school neighborhood, a place that they are constantly in, right? They're going to school every day. But we really uh, give them a moment and the time and space to look deeper and more closely at images and objects that they pass every day through the lens of a photographer. So it's pretty phenomenal to see the final product and also um, the student's journey and growth in terms of their writing and how they view and experience themselves. And our third course is a favorite for everyone. It's our mural course. Um, students love it, teachers, administrators. And in this course, our Halle students learn about what public art is and how it's different from private art. And so one of the highlights of this tour and really the crux excuse me, the highlights of this class is that the students go on a mural tour around Detroit. And similar to the photography field trip, we're all passing murals every day in Detroit. Detroit is really vibrant in terms of um, the public artwork, but do our students ever have a chance to stop, get out, and engage with that artwork? And that is what we do for them um, and with them on the mural tour. So they have a, a chance to look at public art, look at these different murals, understand the symbolism that's within it, they understand the power of text, how just a word or a phrase or a sentence can really enhance meaning, and they also look at the pictorial narratives that are within those murals. Um, also in our mural class, our students have a chance to inquire about the purpose of murals. So what is the purpose of public art? Why do we even have these murals? And they end up questioning and wondering, you know, is this mural here to affirm us? Is this a mural that celebrates who we are in our community? Is this a mural that's here to inform us? What information are we getting? Or is this a mural that's here to transform and change us and really have us think differently and experience life differently? Um, in the murals class, they also choose a social issue that's important to them. And then they take that social issue, they analyze it, they analyze a social justice solution, and then we partner and collaborate with a local muralist 
who takes their ideas and their experiences and mocks it up into a mock mural that ends up being displayed within their school that they paint. Wait, our muralists are here. Yes. So we can give a, a round of applause for our muralists who are here. phenomenal uh, just to see the journey once again for students just to look at what is public art right just learning it then they experience it on the mural tour they engage with it and then they think about social issues they create something that highlights a social issue but then also gives the answer and the medicine for that social issue they put it up in their school community and then they have a chance to kind of be voyeuristic and watch how their peers in their school community is affected by the artwork that they did. So it just comes full circle. Um, so those are our three main courses that we teach. The last thing I'll end with, even though each class is different, um, we start off with all of our courses by teaching um, our first class, which is called Intro to the Heidelberg Project and Heidelbergology. And we think it's very important for our HALA students to know that HALA is anchored in and rooted in the Heidelberg Project. They learn about the history of the Heidelberg Project they learn about Tyree Guyton as a person and also as an artist, and they really learn about this legacy of art um, being used as medicine in Detroit. Thank you. All right, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm going to keep it calm and response. When I say I go, can you say I may? I go. I go. Okay. I just want to make sure we are all just here. Blood is circulating. Um, so this is our pilot, our pilot, our pilot phase overview. That it's a research study that we did with the help of our coworker Jessica and Ben. Um, and so we just wanted to give you a quick understanding of just who we are and where we are in terms of the East Side of Detroit right now. Um, we had four school partnerships during our our pilot phase. We currently have seven. You can see they're all within the vicinity of the Heidelberg Project. So if you see this dot right here, that is the Heidelberg Project. And these other dots are our four schools. In terms of numbers, um, 125 students between the ages of fifth grade and 12th grade took our survey. But in terms of the reach and impact, we reached about 190 students over our first pilot phase. Um, our format is project-based. We have an, a nine-week instructional course um, with a culminating event that's the 10th week. Our class size is 15 to 20, so we have that intimate instructional time. But what I really want to key in on, on hone in on, on this presentation is the fact that Heidelberg <coughs> right here is within the vicinity of all of our schools. Um, the reason why this is important because when you talk about most art programming, uh, pro programs that go into the schools, they don't have an outside space. So just think about it. When we're going into the schools, we have a hub, we have a cultural village, we have a community space that our teams can go to where they are learning about engaging, engaging with, with mentors, having a conversation, meeting an artist in residence, um, but most importantly, it's a space that can come to and be a part of the extended Heidelberg Project family. Adolescents, what happens during adolescence? A lot. Well, a lot, right? <laughs> <laughs> so puberty, obviously, but also during adolescence is most importantly the last time you can really develop empathy, but then it, most, most importantly, it's also when you're developing your identity, right? Who am I outside of my family? Who am I outside of my household? So when you come to the Heidelberg Project, when you meet our mentors, when you meet our instructors, you're like, hey, I'm, I'm learning a little bit more about myself, how to express myself, who I want to be within a larger context, right? So that's what we call social and, and cultural capital. When you develop that, that is a resource. That's a tool that you're using to engage in the world. And most importantly, we're learning from Mr. Guyton. We're learning, they're learning, our students are learning is that you can transform <coughs> Through, through art, right? I can make something out of nothing. I have agency now. I know more people. I have more resources in my neighborhood that I can create change. I can create solutions to a problem that I see in my neighborhood with myself, with my voice, with my creativity. So that's the most important thing that we wanted to hone in on is that we have a healing space in the immediate neighborhood that you can walk to, that you can take the bus to, that there's usually some familial relationship to with grandparents and parents. They all know the Heidelberg for the most part, or they have a direct conversation or, or memory about their interactions with the Heidelberg Project. So um, that was the most important uh, note I wanted to make was just that we have this cultural space. It's, it's a cultural village um, and it is a, a healing space. So going on, we wanted to talk about the benefits as well as um, show you some of the student work. So this is from our hip hop 
uh, art through hip hop class, those are their collages. This is the, the, the process, which is really the most important in the project. Um, the mural project that we did with Mr. Tony, <laughs> alongside, and that's called The Roads to Success at Southeastern, and we'll talk more afterwards about what that's about. This is with our middle school babies, and this is called Rooted in Greatness. Um, we can talk more about the social issues, and these are our zines with our elementary school babies. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, so we just want to go through this really quickly. So, student reflections. This is my favorite part because this is when they just break down all the, I go, I go, I go. All right. I have to make sure you guys are still with me. So, with, with the quote, the first one says, yes, because it helps you enjoy yourself. You know, what would you suggest to this class or friends? So, obviously, with expression, they're learning to self analyze themselves. And the reason why we're teaching them about art interpretation is not just for art, but it's also for self to be able to develop critical thinking skills to do that. Yes, I would recommend this class or friend because it, if they need help, a helping hand, they, they can get out of trouble and it helps the community. So, to me, that just feels like they see the Heidelberg Project as a resource when they're in need, right? Um, the third and the fourth is, I would suggest because it opens up our eyes to see things about ourselves and how it helped me to get over a lot of issues and help me to be a better person. So that alone, you know, those two just talk about the healing power of art, your ability to cope with and, and really use art as a point of healing. We had an experience yesterday, actually. Yeah. I'm getting really emotional. This young man was was homeless, his, and he was he was in um, living in a group home because his mom was in a shelter. And this this photo he saw on the board, he he had a he had a moment, he had a healing moment where he was just testifying about what those. It was a boxer. It was an image of a boxer and some and just you know in a stance of about to fight. And he just talked about how my mom's fighting to get me back. My mom is fighting for us, you know, and I have to be strong. And so. He needed that space to talk about what he's going through. And that was a portal healing for him yesterday. That was very touching. And then the last, the last quote is, yes, I would become, I, yes, I would recommend it to a friend because it can help you understand that art is much more than what people think it is. It can open up your mind. So yes, they're learning that art is um, a transformational act and that um, it opens them up to new experiences that they need to get to become an adult, basically. Um, so, Maybe we can go on to benefits really quickly because we have like 30 seconds. <laughs> so I'll just make it really, really fast and I'm going to be like going back and forth so I can yeah. see it. Um, so one of the benefits of participating in the HOW program is that it's project-based learning. As Kisa said, we have a focus on leadership, change, agency, thinking. The second benefit is that it's a creative outlet for students. We're all creative, but we don't always have the space and the time to be creative. So HALA provides that for our students. It lets them um, have a moment to self-explore, and it also just gives them time to uh, look at the things that they're interested in and let them imagine and see beyond what is in front of them. The third benefit is that it builds creative problem solving. They also get a chance to collaborate and to hone those critical thinking skills. The fourth benefit is that it's an introduction to career pathways, so we always bring in guest speakers in each class, so they have an opportunity not just to learn about the art um, and graphic art, but to actually talk to and engage with people in that field and see where it could lead them. And then the fifth benefit is an understanding of civic engagement and social justice, once again, linking back to that social agency piece. Thank you. Kisa and Anya, I do want to ask all five of our panelists to please step up and we can have a, just a brief discussion. We have about five to ten minutes um, for anyone who may have questions, um, need any further clarification. Um, anyone have any questions? Let's start. Um, I guess my question is, I see so many linkages across all of the work that you all are doing, and I'm wondering, um, is this the first time you all ever sat at a table together and been able to see each other's work? And, and I'm wondering what you took away from each other, because I, I mean, there's so much immediate connection between everything you're doing, you know, theory and practice is kind of bouncing back and forth, and I just wondered what you all got out of it. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> I thought 
thought of, um, I met some new potential partners. <laughs> More community building. And um, I liked the way um, the benefits were described. And um, may uh, an older student take the mural class? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. They sound like wonderful. The murals look wonderful. Yes. So I, I, after, after our first call, I would say the immediate takeaway for me was just how um, healing spaces are everywhere. You know, they, they they can be in a counseling office, they can be in a classroom, uh, on a higher education level, or on a you know public school level. Um, or out in an environment, right? Like the Heidelberg site. So that was the takeaway. It's not on. Sorry. Hopefully you can hear me. Yeah. Testing. Okay. Now you have a mic. So uh, I'll repeat what I said. I said after our initial um, meeting, um, the thing that was striking to me is just that healing spaces really happen everywhere, wherever they're needed. They can happen in a counseling space, they can happen in a classroom, either higher ed or elementary high school level, or out in nature in a public space. So, um, and this the importance of public space because it transcends. It can be something where, you know, so many things happen in the quote unquote Zocolo space, right? You have engagement, you have discussion, um, and just interaction, and, and then you have the actual just sacredness that happens when you interact with art and nature. I was going to say while watching your video um, just about the reach of art in terms of your personal reach and how it can help you get into the depths of yourself, but then also what really resonated with me was the woman from Japan who uh, drew you know, pretty much the flag of Japan on the TV and how maybe she's not there, but anytime people go to the Heidelberg Project, it's something you'll see and it's a conversation piece or a wonder and just how art can connect um, on many different levels. And I think I was looking at art in so many different um, ways from your presentation to your presentation. And I think what resonated to me the most is um, how art has the power to transform and how art has the power to transcend, okay? And I think that when we're working with our students in the classroom, we really give them that platform to do both of the things that you talked about in your pieces, so we thank you for that. I'm just wowed by the energy. <laughs> There's just so much creativity and energy here just popping. And uh, I think the idea that uh, our project uh, that they restarted some 30 years ago now has the offshoots that it has in so many different creative ways, uh, so many different outlets, I just think it's flat out exciting. I just wanted to comment how powerful it is to see three black women who have, ch who have chosen this work. So much can understand three black women who are in community with each other out of friendship and decide to collaborate in this way. It's just really, really powerful. So thank you. Thank Not you. A question, so thanks. <clears throat> Well, we'll, we'll go to Don first. Okay, sorry. Okay. I am currently a lecturer on the Masters of Community Development. Okay, Don. Don. Gotta get right up to it. Oh, I gotta breathe all the way in. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, and in my lectures, I have always used art as an example of community engagement. This year, I'm working with a professor who has focused on health. And I need somebody to help me find theoretical information on art and health. I've gone all over the country, and I have murals from everywhere that you could possibly imagine that I just put on the screen and the students are going, wow, wow, wow. Um, and how that works socially, politically, and the, the impact that art has. But when it comes to health, I'm not finding 
the same kinds of information on the theoretical side. Um, is that because the research has not been as prevalent when it comes to health? I, or maybe I don't know how to research it, which I kind of think is not the case. So, Are you talking about physical health? Mental health as well. I'm not finding as much information as I thought should be available. Mm -hmm. And physical health is like non-existent when I'm looking for research. A couple of things, but nothing that is not going to make the students go to sleep. You might want, do you have a good librarian where you are? Yeah. Um, talk with that person. Um, I, our librarians are very helpful to me and knowing what search terms to put together to get to what you need, which databases the information might be in. Um, I, I think one problem I know from our therapy is that the information, the literature is in a number of different databases. It can be in art, it can be in nursing, uh, psychology, etc. It can be all over the place. So I think um, talking with an expert in information science, librarianship, who can help you put your particular search terms together to get you what you want. Yeah. If you give me your card, I'd be glad to do what I can to point you in some direction. Thank you very much. All right, Terry, you had a yes. comment? <clears throat> yes, I have a philosophical question. Who are we, for real? And before you all, go into that. We have only about two minutes. Maybe maybe one person can respond to that eloquently. In 15 seconds. Um, I think we are a community of people um, seeking change. I think we are a community of people who inspire to inspire. We are a community of people who are reaching out and looking and, and looking at and looking inward for ways to mobilize a community of thinkers and mobilize a community of artists and to mobilize a community of educators to really give back um, in a different way. And we are a community of people who will not give up. We are a community of people who believe that who believe that every individual has the power to succeed and every individual can do what he or she puts their mind to as long as they have guidance, as long as they have determination, as long as they go after their dreams. All right. Last question, comment. Hi, I wanted to ask, which school are you in in Detroit? The high schools, elementary? Or? We're in um, high schools, elementary, and middle school. Um, Martin Luther King High School, Southeastern High School, um, Marcus Garvey um, Junior High School, Cesar Chavez. We're in Ace Academy, Hutchison um, Elementary and Middle School. And I think there's one I'm leaving out, but so far in Carstens, that's, those are our seven school partnerships. Okay, great, because I was in the schools, and some of the schools that you mentioned I was in, and I'm so glad that the programs are continuing because they had gone down for a minute. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So that's our closing of Art as Medicine. Just want to thank everyone for, for participating, and kudos to our beautiful panel. Thank you, Jessica.